Good maddening day, travelers. Welcome to A Look Into the Madness, Part 1. Hello. As some of you know, this is a reward for the goals that you as my patrons have unlocked for all of us. In this video series, we're going to go over all of my headcanons for Wonderland and the four key pillars of my Wonderland. That being the land, the citizens, the magic, and the game, which I lost, by the way, if you know, you know. If you don't, that's what the description box is for. <laughs> so, going in order, the land, which is Wonderland itself, from all of its rolling hills to the deep forests and its rolling waters. So, you know, land. Now, before we go in any further, I want to say a couple of things of where I draw my inspiration. I draw my inspiration from a fair number of sources for this headcanon hodgepodge. I take inspiration from the books, I take it from video games, and I take it from movies. That's why during the making of this video you're going to hear it refer to as my wonderland, as mine, because it's all of my headcanons and all of my pathways that I've been meshing together for literally years. So with that out of the way, back to the land. The most important thing to know about the land is that it is ruled by absolute sheer and total chaos. Small things are big, big things are small, things that are upside down are now right side up, uh, up or down, left or right, it gets very confusing very fast. If someone gives you directions and you follow the quote-unquote wrong directions, you'll be reset either to the very start of your journey or to checkpoints along the way, depending on how far you've made it. The land will actually change itself based upon how the previous game with the previous Alice went. If it was too hard, it will scale itself down. If it was too easy, it will scale itself up, attempting to match it with the current Alice and pretty much create a perfect game scenario. The goal of the land is to push Alice to be the best version of themselves, good or bad, to unlock any hidden potentials that that Alice is currently hiding from themselves. Due to this, in part, when a new Alice arrives, the land is shaped by Alice, as it is that Alice's needs that must be met by the land. So we've talked about game mode of the land, but what happens when there isn't a game? What happens when there isn't an Alice? Well, for those periods of time, the land returns to a more balanced, more neutral version of itself, a little bit less chaotic and less battlegroundsy. During this time, there's no one being tested, so there's no reason to put on a giant show, and this is when the land, which is almost as sentient as you or I, gets to sit back, relax, and just take a breather before another Alice ports in. For active games, there are some landmarkers that all games must include such as the rabbit hole, the glass, the town, the hatters, the well, the castle of both queens, Bandersnatch's lair, the Jabberwocky's cavern, seaside, forest, river and bridge, the clock tower, the forest of flowers, and the mushroom clearing. During its relaxed time, some areas might condense down into others, such as the forest and the mushroom clearing, uh, the in general forest, so those all three might just combine into one. The queen's castles, these will condense down to just one castle, or they might bunk with somebody else, just to give the land more of a break. Now, this is all I can really cover about the land without treading too much into any of the other three categories I still have to cover. So, this has been part one. Thank you all so much for watching, listening, making it this far. Thank you to the subscribers who helped me unlock this, especially Yami Kitty Cat and Nick Rising. Uh, and to everyone else who views this in the future, hello and welcome! I'm hoping to explore Wonderland in its entirety with you also, and I really hope you enjoy it. Keep an eye out for some Wonderland-related D&D items that I actually have in the works. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited! Bye, travelers! Port you soon!